eight billion dollars at one end, a return of 54 million at the other. And you can see this is really a lopsided balance. We are really great at investing research. We are not good at, as, as good as we need to be in taking advantage of that investment in research in, 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 in creation of commerce back in, into our, to our nation. And that's why, uh, in fact, it was 2007 uh, or eight that the federal government instituted these centers of excellence for commercialization research, which we are one, to try and take the research and ideas developed at universities through the commercial uh, uh, path to a point where companies would say, now I can see where I can actually make this work and make this a commercial success. And this is an important uh, issue for every country to invest. And it's not just a Canadian issue, it's, it's worldwide. Um, as I said, when you look at the technology, we are at the university level, we are very good at the, the bottom, the, the red half, where we do the basic research of the applied research. But really, as it as it sort of the technology gets moved up the ladder, we lose interest. And in fact, our funding agencies have in particularly not been very interested in funding. Not they're very good at funding basic research or application of that research. They're not good at funding development or commercial development of that research. And that has been a, a problem, which hopefully these Caesar uh, uh, agency, the National Centers of Excellence, have tried to address. Canada right now ranks somewhere in the top half of, uh, as far as innovation index, but about 40 years ago we were in, in the top two, three. So we are slowly uh, coming down that, that, that innovation uh, ladder, and I think it's important for us as a country to recognize the importance of innovation and to, to sort of invest uh, in, in means to increase that. Um, I'm, I'm pleased, I have to say, that in this year's federal budget, uh, even though it was uh, touted as a deficit uh, cutting budget, uh, $5.2 billion uh, was cut uh, by 2015, and I know many, many public sector jobs were cut, and I'm very sorry, but there was at the same time investment made by the government in, 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 in the inno innovation. And that was a strong message that uh, the government sees the role and the value of innovation in its uh, future uh, future uh, development. And those innovations, uh, uh, you can go to the budget and look at it, but there's increased innovations, uh, uh, a Canadian Foundation for Innovation and various uh, uh, funds which are available for both industries as well as university agencies to, to commercialize their innovation. So that's the positive uh, spin on that. Uh, south of the border, uh, as you know, President Obama has also continued to press on the fact that the first step in winning the future is encouraging American innovation. America ha used to be uh, the global innovator. Uh, still to today, over 60% of all new inventions, innovations uh, in the last century have come from the United States. That's why the United States is such a global power. It's not because it's got lots of oil and resources is because they're the innovators. They have been innovators in the last. They slipped down to number two. South Korea is taken over. And at per capita, I think Israel is now uh, number one. So they also recognize they can't take it for granted. I mean, RIM is a great example. You can never take it for granted where you are. You need to constantly innovate uh, the market or else you, you'd be left behind. Uh, there are lots of lessons uh, which you learn in the path for commercialization, certainly for a researcher. And I know there are some young researchers in this room. And I think uh, you, you, you'll hear today from our speakers about those important values. Uh, uh, in fact, our conference has been set up to you hear in the morning uh, great ideas, researchers with exciting new ideas. And then later today, you will hear how those ideas uh, can be moved into a commercial path, and then you hear from companies as to the strategies, uh, uh, their, their, uh, their, their uh, sort of goals in, in commercializing uh, products and, and their pitfalls on the way. Uh, so lessons in commercialization of, of research are important. You, know, you need to have core assumptions which are accurate, uh, value propositions which are important for, 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 for your customers. Uh, protection of IP, something as a university researcher, the first thing you do when you find something new, you want to publish it. 
<laughs> you soon realize in the commercial plan, the moment you, you publish your results, you've lost the value of your new idea. And so it's, it's a different world, actually. And so uh, many university researchers are now being told of uh, the pitfalls of uh, how to deal with new ideas. Um, and I think these are very important lessons that I think you're going to hear today in our conference. The other thing which, again, it's, it's difficult for, for uh, people who are at the end of creating new ideas to understand is that it takes a long time to get an idea to the market. Um, in, in medicine, a, a, a new idea can take easily uh, 12, 15 years before it, can, it is ready for the market from the discovery point to the incubation to acceleration, finally to, to sales. And again, there are significant amount of investment needs to go on at each step in order to get a good idea into to everyday life. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a simple uh, formula. And there are lots of pitfalls on the way. Uh, regulatory barriers, uh, 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 disruption of uh, various specialties or uh, reimbursement. You know, how people need to get paid in order to do something even though if it's useful for people. Uh, adverse reactions and, of course, disruptive of new technologies. Uh, something, again, as I said, RIM discovered in a painful way uh, that you can easily get disrupted by new technology unless you're constantly on the look for those uh, new technologies. At the end of the day, for somebody to take a decision to take your idea uh, 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 to, to the marketplace, uh, they have to make money. And that's a reality which you also have to understand is, is the, the if your new way produces saving, it has to be enough to provide for various stakeholders, but also for the investors, because they're investing in this uh, because they want to make their money. And you have to realize that's not a dirty word, but it's a reality that you need to, to, to recognize and, 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 and accommodate, because without the investors or without people who are going to fund th that idea, that idea is going to become stale. Uh, as I said, uh, nowadays there's, you know, I, 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 my telesurgery was on History Channel. It was like a historical freak rather than being an everyday place across northern Canada. So really, unless you can make an idea uh, uh, move to the bedside, after a while it, it was a historical freak at, at that, that and a great idea at the time. So I think it's important. The path for innovation is not easy. Um, innovators are easy to come by, and I think there's a whole room full of people here uh, because they're looking for new ideas. They're looking for new ways of doing things. They're, they're actually easy to spot, but it's actually, and the early adopters are not too bad, but then to try to take an idea to mainstream often takes time, and, and, and trying to persuade the majority of people that this is the way of the future, it takes time. So there is a chasm which often companies have a hard time to bridge and can fall through. And that's often why uh, new startups uh, 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 don't succeed, is because they don't have enough to, to, to bridge that chasm which exists between the innovators and early adopters to the mainstream. And that can be a matter of years. I give an example in my own field, minimal access surgery or minimal invasive keyhole surgery uh, it sort of was described uh, in, in, in the late 80s. Uh, but now we are in 2012, and there are still less than 50% of surgeries are, 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 are done that way. So over 20 years, and yet people have established its benefits for the patient, for the healthcare, etc. So that chasm can take years to, 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 to uh, cover. So really, uh, I wish we could all have a crystal ball and look at a research that we're doing and say, is this commercially viable or not. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not, we don't have that. But we do need to ask that each time. And frankly, for most funders these days, they're helping us in that process because invariably nowadays when you apply for funding for research, you have to be able to provide some insight whether it, there is a commercial uh, path for that product to, to, to achieve. So that's why we really have focused on innovation because it's not the end, but it's a means to take that research, a good idea, to everyday use, uh, to, the, to the people with which it can make a difference in their lives. And recognizing that the commercial part of it is an important element of this, 
and it's not a, a, a dirty word, but rather an essential component of ensuring that uh, that new idea takes place. So I'm going to uh, stop there. Uh, I'm hoping we will have our first speaker soon. He's connected. Fantastic. Are there any questions before I move on? Or any comments? Okay. Well, uh, 